Hello and welcome to Chendu.org on YouTube. In this video, we are going to look at how to calculate IRR, which stands for Internal Rate of Return, and how to calculate it for various scenarios using data tables. This is going to be a um, mini masterclass on financial analysis with Excel. So imagine you have a client, Mr. John, and John wants to purchase uh, an orchard, okay? So he came across this very beautiful apple and, and maybe pear and some other plum trees orchard and he wants to buy that. Uh, he got a quotation for maybe half a million dollars to purchase the orchard and he has uh, done some due diligence and come up with some estimates of cash flow. So that means you would pay half a million dollars up front to purchase this and then you uh, you you were expected to spend maybe ten thousand dollars in the initial year for seeding and maintaining the farm and then you might make a return of thirty five thousand dollars selling the fruit that year and then you will continue this process until year 2030 when mr john uh, would like to dispose of this farm or orchard and uh, get his investment back so he has got some estimations but it's not always cut and dry like that in real life situations right so with any investment you would have an upfront investment amount but you could also oh, because there is a lot of uncertainty you want to see what happens if you were for example um, the purchase price goes up by 10 percent you know how how is it going to impact uh, his his return in fact, that's not the only question Mr. John has. He's thinking, oh, what if uh, the the sale price at the terminal value at 2030, if he's not able to sell it for maybe 600,000 and if that price goes down by 5%. And that's not the only question because in many business situations, you always have tons of questions. What if this happens? What if that happens? So how do we model all of these and how do we calculate the rate of return and what happens to that rate of return in all these scenarios and how to visualize that in Excel? So that's what we're going to do. Over to Excel. So here I have a, a sample file with the suggested cash flows. Orchard purchase uh, supposed to happen on 15th of October 2019 for half a million dollars. Because this is a negative amount, I got this as a negative half a million because that's the money that is going out. And then uh, as per the initial uh, discussion with John, um, we're expecting that this, this orchard will be sold on 1 Jan. 2030 for $625,000. And then some estimated operational expenditures, for example, uh, 60,800 operational expenditure in the first year uh, incurred on 1 Jan 20. And then fruit sales, uh, which will be due in 1 March 20, 2020 would be $27,000. And then winter sales for the same fruit will be $43,200. And then this will continue like that. It's a standard cash flow. As you could see, there is a date and an associated amount. Now, if you do not have any dates, if you simply have some cash flows, like you, you put in $10,000 and every year you get $500 investment uh, uh, interest, and at the end of fifth year, you will receive your original money plus a thousand dollars back. So this is the kind of thing. Then the rate of return that you are getting on this can be calculated with IRR. So IRR on that would be a simple IRR. And then you pass the range and it will tell you that uh, you're getting 5.72% return on this investment, right? So that's how IRR works. But the assumption with IRR, internal rate of return, is all the cash flows are uniformly spaced. That means every year or every month or every day or whatever. So then that's the return. But in our case, we don't have uniformly spaced cash flows. We have individual date and the amount. In this case, we can use the beautiful XIRR function. Uh, it will take a bunch of values and a bunch of dates when that value is incurred and then it will calculate the rate of return. Remember, this is a percentage, so we are 
expecting 7.60 percentage of return on this investment but uh, as i said up front this is if everything happens as per the plan what if the purchase price goes up by 5% and what if the terminal value goes down by 5% so like that there could be several scenarios in such case we could set up a list of scenarios because of all the cash flows the variables that we are thinking will have bigger impact are these two you could also model it for operational expenditure changes or fruit sale forecast changes etc etc uh, but i'll show you for these two and then you can apply the same logic for others so imagine we have a control cell where uh, we we say uh, purchase price change and then terminal value change so we got a couple of cells where that will be defined and then initially we just as assume that they will change zero percent that means they will be bang on half a million and six twenty five thousand and then we can edit this in fact i have already done this and linked it to another cell that is hidden so i'll show you with this cell here uh, and then that would be that value right so if I change this, for example, to 10%, uh, that would go up by 10%, and I can uh, still have my uh, rate of uh, uh, return here as XIRR, uh, which is those values and those dates. So, if all else being equal, uh, if my purchase price goes up by 10%, then rate of return will drop to 6.34. Likewise, if terminal value goes up by 20%, then I, I will make, make up for that. If purchase price goes down, we are able to negotiate a little more, then this is how it changes. But uh, this is kind of a trial and error. We are trying to see the sweet spot or whatever. Uh, what if I want to calculate that value for a whole bunch of purchase price changes and a terminal value changes so in such case we use a technique called uh, data tables so i'll show you how that works so in a, in a data table uh, you can have a one variable data table or a two variable or even multi variable but it's just a semantics and you can set them up in this uh, video we'll focus on a two variable data variable data table so these are two variables and we want to simulate the value of that for all of those possible changes so on on this axis we will uh, have uh, let's say purchase price change and then on that side we will have terminal value change so here i'll put uh, minus uh, 10 percent and then minus 7.5 percent uh, and then we'll simply drag this down for up to 10 percent so all of these are the possible changes that we are anticipating in that uh, the leg room for purchase price is negative to positive 10 percent terminal value being 10 years ahead in future uh, there is a little bit more variable to here i'll go with the minus 20 percent minus 15 percent and then uh, we can drag this sideways uh, up to whatever value you think is reasonable okay so once all of these are defined uh, we will need to move this uh, somewhere here um, and then here in the corner cell this is this is my grid I'll, I'll apply some borders around all of this so we could actually see this in the corner I want my rate of return that's the you can either write the XIRR formula here or you can link it to a cell that has the formula so that's the original rate of return i'll put uh, some bold coloring there so we could actually spot that so now what we want is we want that to be calculated for each and every combination here right so we could write a bunch of xirr formulas here but that's probably not the smartest way especially if your formula is fairly complicated and this very long then copy pasting that formula here is not suitable or even uh, sometimes uh, worth doing so you could use data tables all you have to do is select this entire range uh, and then what we need to do is we need to tell excel that uh, i want you to change these two variables for each and every value here and then calculate that and print that result there so makes sense so once we select this we can go to the data ribbon what if analysis data table so this will open up a very cryptic looking form like this 
It says rho input cell, column input cell. For the life of me, even though I've used this just yesterday, <laughs> I cannot figure out what is a row input cell and what is a column input cell. Does row mean this one or that one? So it's always like a hit and miss, but we will give it a try and then we will see which way it goes. So row input cell would be, um, I'm guessing that, and then column input cell could be this. So that means uh, I want you to calculate this value by changing those two using these combinations and then it will calculate all of these we will first apply percentage formatting here so we could actually see the numbers so negative 10 positive 20 purchase price negative 10 terminal value positive 20 so that needs to be 10.52 i believe this is actually doing something else so that's negative 10 so i think we have done it the other way around so i'll go here and fix that problem We'll do this again, row input will be this, and then column input will be that. So negative 10, positive 20, 10.52. So that matches, right? So this is uh, how a data table can calculate all those combinations in an instant, just like that, uh, and then tell you where the cash flows are. Now, when you have a whole bunch of results as a part of data table, uh, they can be often very hard to interpret. This is a very, very simple data table. So we are, really, we are only looking for a high percentage value. But uh, many times when you implement this as part of a valuation model or, or a financial model, chances are you will have many numbers and they may not make sense uh, at a glance. So this is where you can apply very quickly conditional formatting color scale for example green white scale works very well for this kind of a thing where more green is obviously good and you can see kind of a uniform coloring and that that is the irr that would give you best result that means if you can negotiate the purchase price down to 10 percent and if you can sell it off with a terminal value where the value goes up by 25 percent uh, from your initial estimate of 600 25,000 then you will get 10.9 percent now obviously this is a very poor kind of a data table mainly because we have certain amount of control over purchase price that means i can uh, negotiate with, with the orchard owner and maybe bring down the price a little bit uh, using the skills but uh, terminal value is something that is happening way ahead in future and we don't really have any control over what that terminal value could be so instead of that a, a better way variable to sim model and uh, create the scenarios would be your operational expenditure which is more or less in your control you are spending the money so you can control that so uh, but uh, from a demonstration purpose this is a very good one and you can see that uh, if you want you can go and make those additional things as well feel free to check the description for a sample workbook and companion article where i have explained this along with the demo of irr and uh, more explanation into this technique i want to also highlight that this is uh, one of the many concepts that i cover in our 50 ways to analyze data course uh, this is a analytics program uh, advanced analytics and data science and uh, um, statistical and financial marketing analysis with excel so this course is uh, available for you to purchase if you are interested in learning these kind of things and applying business analytics uh, uh, at next level for your day-to-day -day work so go ahead and check it out if you are keen to pick up uh, some of these skills in that course oh, i do have a couple more chapters talking about data tables and uh, and and then obviously 48 more chapters on all other types of data analysis uh, advanced analysis that can be done with excel thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you again in the next video Bye bye